Hi, friends. Yes, I did buy the Hourglass Unlocked Satin Cream lipsticks. However, I only purchased three and I did have seven in my cart. Yes, I had seven. Once, once I looked over the shades and remembered ones that I already owned from different brands, I shaved it down to three and I believe we have 21 shades in all. Let me confirm. Or is it 20? is one of those. They retail each for $38. And let's see here, they are made in Korea. Wow, this is the component here. And what intrigued me the most was the inclusion of certain shades such as, let's see here, Larch, a rosy brown. My gosh, you heard me go on and on about how I love like these rosier mauvey browns, which I think they're just more interesting. And there was another one, I believe it was called Cypress perhaps? Yes, Cypress, a berry pink. I thought that was an interesting combination as well. Back to the original purchase, as I mentioned, I picked up three, Flora, Alpine, and Larch. I was back and forth with Alpine because let, let me just start with the swatches shall we and also another note about the component it is magnetic but i would say uh one critique is that you have to make sure you put it in correctly so sometimes i have to take it for a ride until i could get that magnetic mechanism to actually fit and even though with the magnet is still fairly lightweight and you have the carved logo here on the cap and the bullet design what is this, uh, a trapezoid? Trapezius. Unlike the dewdrop shape that a lot of lipsticks come in, so this makes it for easy application. And again, we have Alpine, which is described to be a warm beige. And I'm like, ooh, should I have gotten Tide? Because Tide is a rosy beige. And that piqued my interest as well. Unfortunately, with hourglass photos, sometimes they don't appear as they do in real life, as they do online. So I was worried if Alpine was going to be too warm, but it works out. See, this is what I'm saying. I gotta find the right angle. Next up, we have Flora, which is a berry rose. This is a fantastic shade all over. It's kind of like my one and done elegant moment. If I don't have much on the eyes or even on the cheeks, I could rely on Flora to give the complexion a little bit of life and overall sophistication. And this I had to get. Larch, which is the rosy brown. I immediately thought of Velvet Affair and several other shades that I have in my collection. So those are the swatches from the Hourglass. Let's get into the actual lip swatch. I'll pull you in a little closer. We get into these comparisons. <gasps> That's enough. Can you guess what I have on now? I actually have a Prapa Beauty lipstick on in Victress. This is a great shade. And another reason why I didn't go forward with my seven lipstick purchase is because I thought about my Prapa Beauty shades, my Mented shades, my Lisa L. There are a few in my collection that I think kind of help me pull back in terms of buying so many lipsticks. If I want it more going forward, I'll wait for a sale, but I try to pick up the ones that intrigue me the most and Yes, don't exist in my collection, but they kind of do anyway, but we're gonna, we're gonna get into that. Up first, we have Alpine, which is the warm beige, and these lipsticks go on gorgeously. Smooth, silky, creamy, but not overly pigmented, which people might think, oh, well, that's kind of bad. I would say moderate level of pigmentation because then you have more control of how the lipstick will appear. You can go back and forth without it feeling heavy on the lips. And Alpine, I think, is a, a nice nude shade on my skin tone. I do like to pair it with a pencil, notably Noah. Where is it? Noah gives me a little bit of structure, not too much, just to provide a stronger outline for Alpine. But I was afraid that Alpine would have looked too warm. And that's why I was back and forth between Alpine and Tide because Tide is the rosy beige. But then I wasn't sure if the rosy beige would appear too pink. So I think I'm going to stick with Alpine. Definitely will play with the different liners that I have in trying to find that perfect cocktail with the liner and what Alpine is doing. But this is a great shade. I think 
a fantastic looking beige on my skin tone that gives me the right amount of beiginess without washing me out. So we like that. Up next, we have Larch. And as I suspected, just a grungy 90s cool girl brown with a little bit of that again. Yes, rosy, but it's almost like a cool tone mauve rose with that brown shade and I adore it just it has a smokiness to it and I could wear this easily as I am now with a little bit of mascara a little bit of cream bronzer I place on the cheeks it gives just enough and why I adore these types of shades and I have a lot of comparisons in my collection to pair with large I was also looking at Shore, which is the medium brown and I was back and forth but I thought my intention was correct that large i feel is just more interesting in terms of the undertone and just what it does it matches my top do you love and everything in between with my preference to these types of browns the cooler leaning more again just grungy tone to them is it was a pick for me happy to have it and i like the lipstick bullet design as well it might be counterintuitive to prefer a straight line over a pointed one but i actually like the straight line i think it just makes it easier to maneuver around the lips so a nice uh, departure from a typically designed lipstick bullet and lastly we have flora the berry rose this is great because it's rose but it's not super red which is what I struggle with. I think, because I said this before with Lisa Eldridge lipsticks, as much as I wanna like pink, sometimes it's hard to nail the right tone of pink on my complexion. But to have berry and rose together, I think it kind of balances those shades out for me where it doesn't appear too red, but there's a little bit of more like wine and it's just muted. I think, which for me, typically, I think muted shades in the rose, red, pink realm work fantastically on me. I don't know why, but when it's a little more toned down like Flora is, it just makes the perfect everyday kind of the lipstick that I would throw on if I wanted to look more put together, maybe I'm going to dinner or something, an event. And sure, maybe I'll apply more makeup for an event, but this is just a great shade like it's my I'm here shade with this rose lipstick that establishes my presence. Look at me. Mm -hmm -hmm. And like I had said before, the consistency of these lipsticks, just wonderful. The way they glide across the lips and also when I'm removing, the lips still feel soft. It's not overly slippy, not overly shiny. It is the perfect satin formula again with great coverage but not so much coverage that it feels so tight on the lips right i think that moderate level of coverage and just a balanced consistency makes the experience just phenomenal there's no other word to describe it and i can understand why one would run and buy all the shades but i just stick with the three and let's go into a few comparisons that I thought of like for Alpine for instance we'll start with Proper Beauties Finesse I actually had this shade on during one of my videos so Finesse has a little more brown in there which I like because it gives my lip a little more just body and especially if I pair this with a darker liner for sure is gonna offer up that like, mm, yes. My beloved Penny Beige from Gooch. Penny Beige definitely has more brown than Alpine. And despite Alpine looking now it has more pink compared to these shades, it still works out. It's very interesting. Susan Nude definitely is a little more taupe. So that's more neutral leaning. And when I wear this, it, it kind of has a little bit of that grayish type of an undertone and it looks more apparent when I don't have anything on my face. So Susan Nude isn't a go-to shade if I don't have any blush or bronzer or even a little bit of eyeshadow. I have to be a little more strategic with Susan Nude. Let's go in with Propa's Victress that despite the bullet looking deep, it actually... I think a, a moderate shade, so a little more than Penny Beige and a little more neutral than uh, Finesse, 
right? I actually like Victress, I think, more than Finesse. Do I? Ooh, I'm saying, am I starting a rumor? Because it's a little more translucent, it's not as richly pigmented as Finesse and doesn't look as beigey, I guess. Going into the Mented lipsticks, we have Dope Taupe, which I thought of. Dope Taupe, I think, will probably be like a large comparison because we're going into like the, the brownie realm. But let me pick up Nude Lala from Mented as well, see what that does. So that's gonna have a little more, it's like a, a warmer brown shade for sure compared to the these letter beige shades. Definitely wanna take a look at Brand Nude. Brand Nude I think will maybe be a large moment because it definitely has a similar vibe. This is Suku's uh, Sheer Matte in 14. So it's a different formula but Mm, kind of similar to Alpine. I think the matte formula steers the color a little bit, but when I swatched Alpine or saw Alpine, I thought about uh, Suku Sheer Matte in 14, which is like one of my favorites. Lisa's Fawn, I think similar. Yes, this appears to have a little more pink in there, but because the satin formula makes it appear not as potent, I think that's why even the pink undertone that exists in Alpine, over, although it says it's a warm beige, I think there's some pink in there, it still works out. Whereas Velvet Fawn, Velvet Fawn works out on my skin tone, for sure. i rather wear Velvet Affair, however, because I think it just looks better overall. But when I find, but paired with the right lip liner, Fawn, of course, is beautiful. Linda Halberg's Majestic, and look, Majestic, the actual stick, has a square, uh, what's it called, bullet as well. This is in Sepia, which I adore. So Sepia is kind of like large, kind of, but not as much. It still has like that grayish tone to it, which I absolutely adore. So we'll swatch this again because now I want to go in with Larch on this arm. But you know what? Who am I kidding? It's going to be so awkward with my left hand. Hold on. Let me wipe these off first. I'm using my CeraVe <laughs> to help wipe with, uh, there we go, just to get that off all right let's start at the very top with larch dope taupe definitely more brown leaning next we have mented a little more of like that actually these look very similar they do 100 let me try this on actually this definitely has a little more hardiness to it it's more like a like a richer version of large, 100%, but the undertone is similar. Like, again, that more neutral, cool, grayish brown. Mm. And this is foxy brown, much warmer in terms of the undertone. From Propa Beauty, we have Believe It, which is definitely a little warmer. Another reason why I didn't buy Shore, because I felt that I had a brown, you know, that would kind of match up with that shade. This is Her Magic. And I had my eye on Sahara, which was like a, a cinnamony brown shade. But her magic, I think, kind of like could replace that for me. Also Cinnabar, Cinnabar from Lisa Eldridge, beautiful shade. From Propa, we have Closer, which is the shade I thought of when I saw Large. So let's quickly put that on. I think the main comparison that I'm detecting is that these almost have like a hardier grayish grayish serving in the undertone whereas large you can still detect a little bit of that mauvey rosiness to it so i think that is the primary difference between the shades because the vibe is the same 100 percent but the rosiness factor is what i think I want it large for that I wasn't getting from these shades that still had like that taupey brown hue to it. This is Profits, which kind of reminded me of Her Magic, but maybe it was Profits that gave me that Sahara vibe. This is pretty too. I gotta wear my Proper Beauty lipsticks more often. This is what I was expecting Sahara to do because on the website from Hourglass or Sephora, it says a warm sienna. 
And this is kind of like what I was expecting it to do, but I think, what is it, Profits? does that as well. I don't know if I'm identifying Sienna correctly by matching these shades together, but I adore what it looks like. It's like a more reddish brick brown shade, but it's so pretty. And we have Focused, again from Prapa, still on the warmer side, a little more neutral leaning, I guess. So that's why I didn't get sure because I got a lot of these I got a lot of these brown shades already. This, I forgot about. This is uh, Gucci's, let me see here, the matte lipstick, the Mona Leslie Cameo. This is a matte shade, but I, this is like Larch, but the matte version. Hmm. Yep, this, <laughs> this reminds me exactly what Larch is doing. It has a little bit of that rosiness too. This is in the matte version. I don't know if they have the Mona Leslie cameo in the satin. So if you already have that in satin and you're eye in large, maybe they could be similar. And my lipstick bullet just broke. This is what happens with matte lipsticks. I cannot stand it. Gotta wear this more often. Here we go, Velvet Affair from our beloved Lisa Eldridge. I have to be careful with this one as the bullet broke on it as well. Surprisingly, doesn't look anything like Larch and why I probably prefer this over Fawn because it does have a little more depth and just brown in the undertone and I think serves me better as a like a nude for my complexion but the brown just gives the lips I think a little more character so they they don't look as washed out you know what I mean look look what I have a Chanel lipstick, the Rouge Allure 199 in Nattendu. Definitely reminded me of Larch, but this is satin as Larch is, but I think this is giving you a little more color, whereas this is more mauve, rosy leaning, those being the prominent like shade notes, whereas Larch, the rose mauve is like under the brown backdrop shade of the entire lipstick for me. Let's try it on. Let's let's see for ourselves. And Natandu, I think, is a more subdued version of Larch, 100%. This has a just a heartier serving of the color overall, where this is a, a softer serving of it, but the undertones bringing that mauvey brown just vibe to the complexion, I think is still present. And Freck Beauty's Makeout Club in Batty, a matte finish, but kind of along the lines of what we've seen from the large family not as mauvey rosy brown definitely that has like a warmer tinge to it you know what i mean this actually reminds me of a fair so this is a fair here this is batty batty has a little more brown so that's interesting this is like I guess an affair dupe if, if you want it. How dare I suggest a, a dupe for Lisa Eldridge? I know the component and the formula, impeccable. However, if you're looking for a shade similarity, but didn't want to get a fair, but didn't want to commit to a Lisa Eldridge lipstick, you might find similarity in the body shade. Now I have my Natasha Denona lipsticks here, officially the I Need a Nude collection. I have Noah, I haven't opened Noah in quite some time and I was almost done with this. Noah for me, I think similar to Alpine, but dare I say, I might prefer Noah because Alpine still has like that pinkyish hue to it. You know what I mean? And Noah feels a little more beige neutral. And also the lipsticks are not as, they're not as shiny, which could be a neutral thing depending on what you're looking for in a lipstick. I also have Sammy. Sammy is giving you a little more brown versus Noah. Noah has a little more like, Compared to Sammy, almost like a, a pinkiness to it, but not warm pink, more neutral leaning pink. And lastly, I have Michelle. Definitely the lightest, but I still like the undertone a lot. Believe it or not, Michelle almost resembles Alpine. How crazy, Alpine looks so rosy next to those shades, my goodness. And one last time with the Suku Sheer Matte. Such a different color compared to I think this, 
this is definitely warmer, I think. I know the matte dry down might steer the shade a little bit, but mm -mm -mm. let me do finesse one more time. Probably, hold on. I think finesse is a better matchup for me for like beige nude purposes because it's not as pink and it has just a little more warmth compared to Alpine. You know what I mean? But it still doesn't wash me out at the same time. Finesse is a great color. I nearly forgot about this until I just popped it out in going through my drawers. Maybe it was for my bronzer video that I was doing this with. And I don't even feel the need to wear a liner. Whereas with Alpine, I kind of do, but it's okay. Like if I don't, this is Alpine on the center. Really not much difference, however. This is Alpine by itself. You see what I mean? It's just a little lighter. It's a little lighter, but I feel the need to wear a liner to give it a little more contrast. And I quickly wanted to show Flora. Flora with two Lisa Eldridge shades. I believe it was Velvet Muse and Velvet Beauty. So this is Flora from Hourglass. Velvet Blush, ah, that's what it was. I think it was Velvet Blush that I had in mind when I saw Flora for the first time, most definitely. Velvet blush, because it's matte, I think would just have more of an impact overall in the shade. It will just look more rich compared to Hourglass's Flora, which is just softer because it is a sat satin finish. Velvet Beauty is more pink. And I also thought about Velvet Muse. Velvet Muse is more pink. This kind of reminds me of the shade Dove from the Hourglass lineup. I don't know why that name came to mind, but when I saw Dove in the description, it kind of reminded me of Velvet Muse. But if you have Velvet Blush, I think something to stick with if you were eyeing uh, Flora, but you know, if you wanted more of a satin finish, and I didn't pick up all of the new shades from Lisa's latest drop, but no, she did Velvets. She didn't do a lot of the luxuriously lucent, which I think not the same as her satin formula, if I'm not mistaken. She did do a few satin drops, but I'm not sure if they resemble Velvet Blush. But again, I just wanted to make this comparison because if you already have Velvet Blush, you were thinking about Flora, then maybe you don't need to get it. But I do prefer these more like muted, woodier berry tones on my complexion when I'm going into that berry category. So it's not so red and not so rose red either, but like in between. As you can see, I prefer like the mauve just more desaturated tones when it comes to roses and berries and when they are combined with browns, forget it. This is this is me all day. So that is it, sharing my Hourglass Unlocked Satin Cream lipstick purchases as well as my standouts from my current lipstick collection. I just thought to share because these are so similar, but what I thought was profound, just the proper beauty lineup is outstanding, right? I am an affiliate with them, but I haven't used their lipsticks in a while and shame on me for doing so because they deserve a spot in my lipstick just forefront spotlight place on the desk because all the shades are outstanding and definitely help me to dial back in purchasing more hourglass shades simply because as I assumed when I was going through all the hourglass shades and then back of my mind thinking, I have these somewhere. Most definitely. And when Proper Beauty came out, their shades cater to a wider variety of skin tones, especially those who are deeper complected, where, you know, a nude is not necessarily a nude for everyone, which is usually presented as something like light beige or whatnot. But that might not be someone else's nude because their nude is going to be different from someone else's nude, right? Not only did they provide those shades, but Proper also just had more unique shades as well, like the ones I showed in the comparison swatches and that I thought are just gorgeous to wear on their own because something I had struggled with 
when finding that beige or that glamour beige, if you will, is always having to pair it with a liner. But with shades like Finesse, I can just throw on without a liner and it doesn't wash me out, but it gives my lips shape and it presents like that nude look. But I'm happy with my Hourglass lipsticks. I think they're fantastic. They're smooth. Uh, the shades are beautiful. Despite me having seven in my basket initially and just being seduced by all like the rosy browns and the warm siennas, I think I'm fine with what I have in my collection and happy that I shaved down my basket to just three that I stuck with large because this is a gorgeous shade. And even though comparatively, I have similar things going on here and when I apply them, you can clearly see they do have that uh, similar vibe overall. Larch is special because the other colors like Closer and I forgot which one it was, they definitely had, it looked more like a grayish brown versus like a rosier brown. And I know I made the distinction before, but let me know, maybe I'm just crazy. <laughs> I am looking at myself in my viewfinder, so perhaps this opinion will change when I start editing, but Larch I, it's just fantastic. So happy I bought that and happy with Flora as well. Alpine, probably my least favorite out of the three, simply because I think I have shades that just suit me better, but it's not a total loss. I will have to pair it with a liner or I could just experiment with different makeup applications and see how it goes, right? That's how I'm feeling now, but I could definitely evolve on that opinion as well. Let me know fam down below if you picked up any of the Hourglass lipsticks. If you didn't and would like to share it down below what you think are dupes for the shades I shared, I'll see you down in those comments. And until then, that is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped and if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I will see you on here again with another review tutorial, lipstick extravaganza or another brush video. Take care and I'll see you again soon.